Hello, Culture Reset. Thank you for having me. Uh, firstly, can I apologise for any seagull noise you can hear outside? I'm staying in Brighton for a couple of days. Um, my name is Liza Valance and I'm Artistic Director of Studio 3 Arts, which is a community arts organisation based in Barking in East London. Uh, we're a combined arts NPO and we've been around for about 30 years. We're all about democratising art and dismantling the hierarchies and the glass ceilings that exist in our sector and beyond. As a community-focused organisation, we've been heavily involved in the local COVID-19 response strategy and operations, both in terms of our artistic practice and also more broadly in terms of our role as an organisation with strong local links. I've been reflecting on my observations from my own vantage point and how we're sort of locally navigating through the current coronavirus situation and musing on how as a sector we can use to our advantage some of the learning arising from this moment. As you might imagine from someone in my trade, my, excuse me, squeaky chair, my observations and questioning focus around people, relationships and networks. So I'm talking today about five areas that for me stand out as being ripe for interrogation and more thought. And they are neighbourliness and localness, listening, access, key workers and community engagement. I'll share my thoughts and I'll ask some questions for some future pondering. It's clear that there's been a basic and human drive towards neighbourliness and localness. We've seen mutual aid groups springing up and food banks being inundated with donations. For me, this has really reiterated the importance of networks, of local contacts and maintaining a sense of community. So what can we learn from this? For me, local people always know best about what their area needs and as such, they should be centre of the conversation. People very often want to help and to feel useful. In our borough alone, we recruited over 300 new volunteers during lockdown. What are the new ways in which we can support people to get involved in our work and cultivate that sense of usefulness and ownership? Secondly, this has been a time of really listening to people, their needs, their fears, their hopes, expertise, opinions. From picking up prescriptions to helping folk navigate the quagmire of government instruction, we've had to really listen and really hear those voices that often get drowned out to make sure their experiences are featured in the narrative. If we're honest as a sector, how many times in the past have we been guilty of programming stuff and then being surprised when people don't come, despite the fact we never asked them if they wanted it? There's a real efficiency in co curation. Local people helping to choose work means early investment in a process that will reap rewards at the box office, exhibition or festival. Access to the work we're making and sharing has been brought into sharp focus during this period. As a disabled woman, I've admittedly found online meetings from my house much more comfortable than travelling on public transport to a venue that I'm unsure will be able to meet my needs. However, the flip side of this, and something we've been working through in our area, is the significant dig digital isolation experienced by many for myriad reasons. We're working with families for whom a parent's phone data package is their only access to the internet for five people. Not being funny, but homework, paying bills online, keeping in touch with people and all that stuff is going to come further up the list than coming to a craft workshop on Zoom, innit? Some of our older participants don't know how to use the technology and even don't have access to the hardware they need. So our future offer has got to be broad and sensitive to these issues. What would the radical solutions be? There's some really useful work happening in this space and I'll make sure the links are shared. The current reframing of the value of key workers is vital and about time, frankly. If we looked at the culture sector as a society, who are our key workers? Who's doing the vital stuff that keeps our sector ticking? How do we treat them? Are they valued? What's our position on zero hour contracts? How will we stand up and challenge job precarity? What are the spaces and structures we need to influence to see real change here? My final point for now, I could stand on this soapbox for hours, is about community engagement, outreach, audience development. The terms are often interchangeably used by large cultural institutions. Whilst engagement programmes are handy side dishes for reaching local people, they may not have been a central principle of the vision of some organisations. However, in a time of lockdown, community engagement has been everything. It's been how institutions have maintained links with the outside world and sustained their relationships with their donors, audiences and supporters. I've allowed myself a little wry smile about this. Maybe the sector is now fully understanding just how tough and labour intensive community engagement is. 
Relationships take years to build and longer to maintain. And this work takes skill and sophistication. Let's shout about this. Let's support organisations and practitioners to understand community engagement and its value. Thank you very much for your time. Do please be in touch if you'd like to.